binary digits not only represent whole numbers, but they can also represent other forms of data, including signed integers, decimal numbers, and characters. So for example, if we want to represent signed integers, uh, we can use the leftmost bit of a number to represent that sign. So here, zero would mean positive, and one would simply mean negative. And the remaining bits would be used to represent the magnitude of the value. So, I mean, this form is normally termed the sign magnitude notation, and it's one of a couple ways to represent positive and negative whole numbers. So let's just take a look at an example. So let's say we want to represent uh, negative 49 uh, in binary. Well, the way we would do this is we would actually set it up as 1110001. So here, the leftmost one, that very first one, means that the number is negative, and the rest of the value, so the 110001, is 49 in binary. The one problem with how we're representing negative values is that we could have two numbers represent the exact same value. In other words, we can have two different binary values to represent the same number. So for example, I can have 10000 and 0000, both mean zero, which doesn't really make much sense. So we can use a second approach for representing these numbers, which is called two's complement. And this doesn't really change anything with the positive values. They, they stay the same. But the difference is how we handle negative values. So what we do is negative one will correspond to all ones, however many ones we want to deal with. And then when if we subtract one from that list of ones, that's going to give us two. Or in this case, uh, like if I have one, one, one represent negative one, 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 zero would represent negative two. And then I could take it a step further as an example. One, zero, one would be negative three in binary. So the question is how do we actually convert a binary value into two's complement? Well, there are only two steps. It's actually very simple. The first step is that we would flip each bit of the positive version of the number. So zeros would become one and one would become zero. And then we just add one at the end. That's it. So for example, uh, let's say we convert the binary value of negative three into two's complement. So let's first take a look at the positive value of three. So three in binary is zero, one, one. So let's apply the first step. So we're going to flip the bits. So that's going to give us zero, I'm sorry, one, zero, zero. And then we just add one to it. And that gives us one, zero, one. Fractional numbers can also be represented in binary by using the sign integer techniques that we just talked about. But if we want to do that, we must first convert the number into scientific notation, which we describe here as plus or minus m times b to the plus or minus uh, e power. So in this case, m would be considered the mantissa, b would be the exponent base, and usually this is going to be 2, and then e is going to be the exponent. Now, in order to represent the fractional values, the bits that are going to be at the right side of the decimal point would have the positional values r to the negative 1 power, r to the negative 2 power, r to the negative 3 power, and so forth, where r is going to be our base, where once again, well, in most cases, it's going to be 2. For example, let's say we want to represent 5.75 as a binary number, and we'll assume that we'll use 16 bits to represent the number. Here, 10 bits will be used for representing the mantissa, and six bits will be used for representing the exponent. Now in binary, the value of five is going to be one zero one. And in order to represent 0 0.75, uh, the fractional quantity, we can recognize that we can use the, the notation we just described in the last slide with the r to negative one, r negative two, and so forth to see that 7.5 is simply one half plus one fourth, which ends up being two to the negative one power plus two to the negative two power which means in binary, this is going to be 0 0.11 in order to get our fractional value. And we think of this very similar to how we handle uh, decimal notation. The tenths place is basically 10 to the negative 1. The hundredths place is 10 to the negative 2. The thousandths place is 10 to the negative 3. So we do the same thing for base 2. It's just the, the point 0.1 is going to represent 2 to the negative 1. The next decimal place would be 2 to the negative 2. So that's all we're really doing here. 
and then remember that our base here is going to be 2 so that means we can write our value at for 5.75 as 101.11 times 2 to the zeroth power the next step is to normalize our number so that the first significant digit is to the right of the decimal point we're not even close to that the first uh, significant digit in our example is like several places to the left but it needs to be the the first digit should be up to the very right of our point and this is actually a very simple process so all we need to do is just move the decimal place over to the left and each time we do that we increase the value of our exponent so in our example we would move the decimal point three places to the left which means we'll increase the exponent by three so our result for 5.75 would simply be 0 0.10111 times 2 to the third power. Now that we have all the individual pieces, we just need to put all those bits together into one giant binary number. So remember, for our mantissa, the sign is 0 because it is a positive value. The value of the mantissa itself in convert to binary is going to be 101110000. So remember, these first 10 bits deal with the entire mantissa of our scientific notation. Then we look at the exponent. So the sign of the exponent is also 0 because the sign of the exponent is a positive value. And then the exponent is 3, so we represent that as 00011. So remember, we use six bits to represent the exponent. So the first bit is the sign, and then the remaining five bits would be the exponent. So now we just combine all that to get this large number, 01011100000000011. So remember, the first 10 bits takes care of the mantissas. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So right here, yeah, this part right here takes care of the mantissa part. So here's our mantissa. Lovely handwriting, I know. So there we go. So there's the mantissa part. And then this part right here is the exponent. I'm just going to use a shorthand. I'm just going to say exp. So this is the, the representation of 5.75 as a binary number using the uh, scientific notation. So what about text? Well, we can represent text using binary as well. So the idea is that each printable character or symbol would be given some unique number. And we call this assignment code mapping. So the actual code that corresponds to a character or a symbol uh, would be stored in binary. Now to make this work, we need to ensure that everyone who that everyone that's using these text codes uses the same code. Otherwise, you could have one system that uses one code mapping and another system that uses a different code mapping. So we want to make sure that it is consistent among all uh, systems. So the most widely used code mapping is what we call ASCII, A-S-C-I-I. -I. This is an acronym for the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. So the way this works is we have eight bits that are used to represent each character. And that gives us 2 to the power 8 or 256 different characters to work with. Now with that said, only numbers 32 to 126 are actually assigned printable characters. The other values, uh, they're either unassigned or they're used for uh, non-printing control characters. So things like the return key or the backspace or new line, but there are other different types of characters that are assigned these other values. So here are just a couple of examples of characters in the ASCII code. I didn't list all of them. That's something you can easily search online if you want to see the entire ASCII table. But here to show that we can use special characters like an exclamation point. So the ASCII code for that is 00100001, or the integer equivalent is 33. In fact, to be honest, when we look at ASCII numbers, we usually don't look at the binary number itself. We just look at the integer equivalent. Uh, the number 3, you may think that the ASCII code for that should be 3, but it's actually 51. That's just because 3 is being used for some other uh, special character. We're not going to worry about it. But the ASCII value for 3, in this case, is 51. Uh, a capital A would be represented as the ASCII code 65. 
And yes, this includes both uppercase and lowercase letters. Uh, in this case, uppercase letters actually come before lowercase letters. So lowercase z would have the ASCII value 122. There is another code mapping, which is called Unicode, and this is becoming more popular. And this is because it uses the 16-bit representation for characters rather than the 8-bit format that ASCII uses. And what this means is that we can actually represent 2 to the 16th power unique characters, or 65,536 characters, instead of the 256 characters that ASCII provides. Now, you might think that seems, that seems like overkill. Because like 256 characters is already more than enough since we already said that, that some of the ASCII values do not have anything assigned to it. I mean, when you consider that we have 26 uppercase letters, 26 lowercase letters, 10 digits, and a couple special uh, symbols, uh, that's about 100 characters that we would actually use. So why do we need 65,000 different uh, characters to work with? Well, we would only need 100 and something characters if we limit ourselves to Arabic numerals and the Roman alphabet. Uh, using Unicode, it actually will support international languages, which contains a lot more characters out there than what we're normally used to. So it's becoming uh, more popular in the international field. So we've been talking about all these things with binary. Why binary? What's so great about it? Why don't we just use decimals to store numbers? I mean, wouldn't that make more sense? I mean, we're already used to it. The main reason why we use binary values to uh, store stuff in our computers is because the way communication is done in a computer. We're sending electronic signals. And so if we use binary, it actually makes using these signals very easy to use in order to send messages within the system. So what we do is we have our binary values represent different types of voltages. So for example, the zero bit would represent a low voltage and the one bit would represent a high voltage. So whenever we use a binary value, what we're doing is we're sending a sequence of high and low voltages that represent zeros and ones. If we tried to do something like use base 10 for storing our numbers, then we would have to have a voltage value for each digit or yeah, for each possible value. So in this case, we would need nine different voltage values, which would be very, very complicated to interpret. So it's a lot easier if we just designate a low voltage amount and a high voltage that we just keep going between whenever we want to represent zeros and ones. So that's why we use binary values in our systems.